All right, welcome back to Decrypted Tech and our continued coverage of the Gigabyte Z77X UD5 U dash UD5H Wi-Fi edition. We're in the 3D BIOS now. Again, as we told you with the UD3H, the BIOS is um, a little bit different. Uh, they've gotten rid of some of the color on the motherboard to make things a little bit more uh, accessible, easier to spot. Um, as always, you know, you move your mouse around, um, and this. This version is actually working fine with our KVM, so we don't have to take the USB and plug it in somewhere else. So we're not having the same issues that we saw with some of the older ones. But basically all you do is you move your mouse around. When you find something that you want to configure, it's going to pop up a window for you. So you can see here that when we clicked on memory, which also covers the CPU, that we get all the options that we need. Memory timing, voltages, all of that's going to pop up. So we're going to have all that at a glance. All right, again, as we've told you before with other Gigabyte um, BIOSes, is that when you do pop this up, it gives you this nice sidebar, which is uh, really informational. It's got a lot of information on it. It's good, you know, good stuff to see, but because of the way these pop up, most of the time it's covered. You're going to have to drag it out of the way. We do wish that there was something where you could either leave that up and see all that information, kind of push it off to the side, or even squash these down so that all of that fit on the screen properly. Um, we know that there's limited resolution with the UEFI BIOS. It's not going to be, you know, push it out to 1920 by uh, 1080, but there still should be a way to kind of make this all fit into the same screen. These don't need, the sliders don't necessarily need to be as big as they are, and it would just be a little bit easier on the eyes and easier to follow for most users if this was more compact and, and put in a cleaner picture. All right, so let's go back. As we said, any one of these that you click on is going to take you to exactly what you need. These, this is the 3D power. Um, you just click on the VRMs there, you have your uh, integrated devices and IO panel. You can click on storage and get there right away. Peripherals, um, here's the BIOS. It's going to ask you, you know, do you want to do virtualization? All of these other things are going to pop up. And then, of course, if you want to go to the advanced, you just click on the guy with the little hat, and this is what you're going to pop into. Now, on our board in particular, we do have this set to boot into this by default, so it doesn't go to the 3D BIOS, but that's just our preference. You can set that up and change all of this. Right, before we get too deep into the BIOS, we're going to talk about some of your quick options. As you look over here in this small window, you can see that it's going to give you information on how to move through the BIOS. This is very similar to what the older and traditional BIOSes used to have. Uh, F1 is going to take you back to 3D mode. F5 is going to reset it to previous values. You have optimized defaults. You have the Q flash option, which is great. Once you get into the BIOS, uh, a properly formatted USB stick, you can go ahead and flash. Um, just using the system here, you have your system information. Hit that, it's going to tell you what you've got in there, what everything's going on, and all of that is going to pop up. And then, of course, you have your save and exit, and you can also print screen. This is, again, they're telling you right here that your USB stick or your drive has to be fat, formatted FAT16 or FAT32. FAT16 is not going to work on most of them, so what you'll see is with most of your larger USB keys, they're actually formatting in a specialized form of FAT32 that's going to allow you to cover that larger 32 gig or 64 gig files, uh, that space that's available for there, but it's still going to allow you to save these files over and the system will recognize it as FAT32. Uh, these are going to be saved as bitmap again. Uh, it means most of the average picture is going to be about 2 megs. A lot of websites uh, won't allow you to upload that large of a picture, so you may want to convert it over to JPEG before you send it out. All right, let's go ahead and look at the inside of the UEFI BIOS here, the 3D BIOS. So here you have their, your MIT current status. This is going to give you at a glance everything that's going on. You can see everything, uh, you know, what, what RAM slots are populated, one and two here for us. The CPU ID, the update revision, all of this is going to show just exactly what's going on with your board very quickly. You can either click on the back button or you can hit escape and that'll take you out if you're still one of those that likes to use the keyboard. Um, your advanced frequency settings, these are going to be pretty much just the basic frequency settings for the CPU, for the GPU, your clock ratios, you do have a link to advanced features and you can also set up your uh, uh, XMP profile directly from that screen if you want. So as you see here we have our CPU clock ratio set to 48 and we left all of our turbo boost frequencies set to auto which allows the CPU to bounce back and forth and can actually push it beyond 48 if it needs to for single core usage. We've seen the single core CPU push up to as much as uh, 4.9 gigahertz, but it doesn't affect all, all four of the cores that are there. Of course, then you have some of your other options such as your uh, C3 and C6 states, uh, thermal monitor, your C1E and your hyper threading, whether it's turned on or off. You can also change the number of cores that you have going on. 
So these menus, for whatever reason, are no longer drop down. You're going to have to enter what you want. And then at that point, it's going to go ahead and take those and put them in place. All right, so let's go ahead and kick back, and we'll go back, and we'll take a look at the memory settings. All right. And you'll notice that that took us a few clicks to get in there. This is a problem um, across several different UEFI products. And what it is, is it's because of the way the mouse click responds through the system, it just doesn't pick it up. There's a little bit of a lag. Um, it's not necessarily, well, actually, it is a bad thing when you're trying to get through things. You can do it immediately with a keyboard. That's why sometimes we still use the keyboard just to get through things quickly. All right, so now we'll take a look at the memory settings. Of course, you have your XMP profile. It's right now set to profile one. System multiplier is auto. It's going to be 16 because we're using that profile. Give you different settings, uh, performance, enhance, the DRAM time, uh, timing selectable. We could turn this to auto or we could set it to manual, quick and expert. Expert's going to give you the most options. So if we do that, you'll see that all of our timings when we're in here, it's just going to give us more timings that we can adjust and play with to get the best overclocking stability uh, for our memory. And sometimes this will give you some additional uh, performance and stability when you're overclocking the CPU as well. So we'll go ahead and go back, kick this back. Of course you have your voltage settings. Here's your 3D power control. This is going to be your advanced power function such as your phase control, your voltage uh, regulation, your load line calibration. Do you want to set this high, auto, wherever. Right now we got a lot of these set to auto just to see what the board can do on, uh, as we're tinkering around at the end of our performance review. You know, <coughs> it can also set up your protection. Uh, this is nice in that when you set these up, it's going to set the limit that you can push this uh, voltage through there. So it, it, it's supposed to, it's designed to, to help you not damage your CPU. It doesn't always work, but at least it's nice to see that. You have your current protection for your CPU, the vCore, CPU VTT, the graphics current protection, of course your current protection for your memory. These are all nice features that have become very common in your higher end motherboards. And you have your CPU core voltage. Again, we went with uh, dynamic core allocation and left it there. Gets us around 1.387 is what we see when we check it using the voltage uh, monitoring points on the board and of course you have uh, you know our graphics card the GPU that's in the CPU we also uh, added some voltage there just to get to that 1500 megahertz and then you have your DRAM voltage control 1.65 is plenty for most speeds that you're going to kick up to okay last thing is going to be or one of the last things is going to be PC health this is going to show you what your voltages are it's also going to show you what uh, the system is running as far as temperatures fan speeds all of that and then you can change or uh, adjust any of your fan speed warnings and you can also change your fan speed controls down here at the bottom as well you can see here the CPU fan speed control usually leave it on disabled this one also I don't believe that to auto so that's uh, because we're running a water cooler it's just going to give you a little bit better uh, performance out of it it's not going to try and adjust the performance of the pump of course you have your uh, miscellaneous settings which is your PCIe generation settings we left this to auto so the board can determine which generation we're using however you can manually set it to one two or three all right we'll take a look at the system information it's not much here it's going to tell you the name of the board the BIOS revision BIOS date BIOS ID all of that and then of course here when you click on SATA information going to show you what's plugged into which port on the board and you can change your system language between different languages. Right now the default for us is going to be English. It's our primary language. Right, looking here you can see that we have, uh, you know, this is going to be our BIOS features, your boot options, all of that. Not really much to get into. Just, uh, you know, pretty much covers everything. It'll show what you've got and what you can boot from. Right here, peripherals, it's exactly what it says. It's going to be your peripherals, your LAN ports, your USB ports, uh, everything like that is going to be here. You can turn it on, turn it off, set different uh, settings for it. You can change your graphics, uh, memory, allocated memory size here. Again, this goes all the way up to one gig of memory that you can allocate from system memory to be reserved just for the, the uh, GMA that's inside your CPU here. Rapid start technology, all of that's going to be here where you can turn it on. They've lumped it into one... one uh, one screen which is actually nice because everything's here you know where to get to it 
We will still say that we would love to see a search function implemented more widely than just in the Intel motherboard. Uh, that would be great if you pop in here and you say, hey, I want to change this. You just type in the beginnings of it. It's going to give you a list very quickly, and you go directly to it. Shortcuts and all that are nice, but if I don't know exactly where it is, I'm going to still hunt around through shortcuts to try and find where things are. Right here we have power management. Again, it's pretty standard stuff, nothing amazingly different here, but it's still nice to have it in a graphical form. And then, of course, you have your options to save and exit. You can do your boot overrides. You know, your typical ones load optimized default. You can also save different profiles that you set up for overclocking into the board and you can load those directly from here. And of course up here you have your different, you have shortcuts for your language as well as to get into QFlash. So that about covers everything in the Gigabyte UEFI, their 3D BIOS implementation of the UEFI. As we mentioned in our features uh, review, you do have a dual BIOS, so you actually have two of these that you can bounce back and forth between. If one of them becomes corrupted, you can quickly move over to that one, boot up, or you can have different performance profiles programmed into each of these BIOSes, which makes it a little bit more flexible if you don't want to continually move back and forth. You may want to have one where your CPU is overclocked to 4.5 or 4.8 gigahertz, so you can get the most out of a, a CPU-intensive application and then have one that's normal for everyday use. All right, so we've covered that. We'll have more on some of the applications that are bundled with this and some of the features, as well as, again, if you click on the link directly at the bottom of this, uh, this video, that'll take you to our full performance review where you can see all of the performance numbers and read about the analysis that we came up with as far as what those performance numbers will mean, not just for the tests that we use, but also in general for a much more broad base of applications. As always, if you like this video, go ahead and click on the like button. Be sure to share it with your friends. Be sure to subscribe so you stay up to date with the news and reviews we have for you.